Hi everyone, it's Sharon here with Max Senior. So it's day number three in Amsterdam. And here we are waiting for the train that's going to take us to, first of all, uh, Rembrandt's house. And, um, and then we're going to the Van Gogh Museum. So I, wanted, I was really impressed with the train driver. He was a very sweet guy, uh, very well dressed, and he just waved at all the other passing by train conductors. <laughs> and see that little red car? I just love those little tiny miniature cars. And this is a scene of just shop after shop uh, at the train window. Well, I had that wrong. His house is the museum and this is his kitchen. And I just love stuff like this. So this is where he really lived. These are the real windows. This is how his house was built. This is the architecture uh, of the um, 1630s and 40s and 50s. And who knows, probably beyond. Um, now this is one of those cabinet beds and it's in the kitchen they said it was probably the um, the maid's bed that she stayed in the kitchen by the hearth because the hearth had to be kept going all night long and um yeah this is the kitchen there's that's the stove beautifully uh beautifully kept that looks like air conditioning i bet that's not uh, original. <laughs> Got their beautiful windows. Now this this is a parlor at street level and that dais there with that chair was so he could sit and look out at the people walking past on the street. And this is a, a cabinet of the day. And he was, um, he had, he made his house an art gallery also. Uh, these are not all his things by any means. They're uh, other artists of the day. And yeah, it was a, a, an art gallery as well as his residence and where he did his painting and his printing. And um, this is in um, the room next to the entry room. And this is where a guest would stay if they were spending the night. This is another one of those closet beds. And they're very short because people back then did not sleep laying flat. They slept sort of sitting up because they believed if they laid down flat, all the blood would run to their head and uh, they would die. Isn't that amazing? I never knew that. And here's another thing that's interesting. See these marble columns? That's real marble. That's what it looks like. This mantle, that's wood. And it's painted. And it was popular in the day to paint wood to match the marble that you had in your house. <laughs> and um, let me see. I believe this is it. Yes, this is his printing room where he did his um, lithographs. Oh, maybe it wasn't called litho. I think lithograph is with stone. I don't even know, sure, not sure how to pronounce it. But, um, and they gave demonstrations. We didn't stay for it, but there was demonstrations on how all of that was done back then. Sort of the way they do with Colonial Williamsburg in the US. Now this was I believe his living room which was also his bedroom and I thought that was kind of interesting also that he didn't have a 
separate bedroom. Very tall, tall ceilings. Oh, and that mirror, that was very unusual to have a mirror in your house in the mid 1600s. They pointed that us, out to us also. And now here's more of these little stairs. This is how they were built uh, back then. And that's when the house was built that we're staying in. So it's exactly the same model of stairway from one level to the next. And this is where he um, had his studio, his personal studio. And that swag hanging from the ceiling would reflect light down onto his desk. And he did a drawing of himself at his desk, and they used that drawing to recreate that little corner. And I remember our riverboat captain yesterday said that many of when you see these small panes like here in this uh, this building that many of those are the original glass from the six, 1600s so this lady is um, is demonstrating the way they made color in their paints or for their paints and this is his Ah, his collection room. Uh, many of the notables of the day uh, had collections. It was sort of the thing. And depending on how much money you had, um, that decided, <laughs> I guess, how many things you got to collect. But he had, there's a lot of different, very eclectic things. This is a snake skin. It's huge. Um... Yeah, and I, I, I don't, I don't know if those are, you know, real Roman or Greek marble statue pieces. And some of them almost look like Brazilian uh, bushman headdress. That that there was two huge turtle shells. And yeah, lots of uh, caimans and small stuffed alligators <laughs> it was interesting it was like he had his own little museum of shells and it was kind of everything you could imagine and the light wasn't real good I don't even know what that is down there there's another one of those headdress things. And he had breastplates. And it was his art cabinet. This is like the, the fangs of a saber-toothed tiger. And they were real. And this is his pupil studio. Uh, apparently he had uh, a lot of students and they said that there were, there were some that produced drawings that it was difficult to tell. Uh, which ones were Rembrandt's and which ones were the, the students because they were so good at copying his style. And I thought it was interesting to look out the window and uh, realize that pretty much the scene out this window looked exactly like this in 1650. And this is his actual house. All of those stories, wherever you see those red shutters, that was his house, the whole thing. He was fairly, I would say, well-to-do. And this is a Belgian chocolate shop, just a little past his house. And uh, I was so impressed with these <laughs> chocolate shoes. And the woman standing outside the uh, shop turned out to be the, uh, the proprietor. And she invited us in and... I told her that I love making chocolate cake 
and with Belgian chocolate ganache and she invited us to choose any any um, candy that we wanted. I chose a sherry covered um, ganache ball. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, this is the lady that owns the shop. It was just delightful. So if you ever get to Rembrandt's house, stop in at the little Belgian chocolate shop right next door. <laughs> I don't usually do that, but I did today. And here we are in the, one of the town squares waiting for our train that's going to take us to the Vincent van Gogh Museum. Except for I found out that's not how you pronounce his name. It's Vincent van Gogh. Except for I can't do that sound. <laughs> I really like their architecture. It's just old. <laughs> Everywhere you look, it's really old. And oh my gosh, the pigeons are so used to people. They'll sit on your arm if you'll feed them. Isn't this amazing? Oh, and I love bagpipes. Okay, so here we are inside the Van Gogh Museum, and it is really large. He's much more um, noted than Rembrandt, although he certainly had a poorer existence when he was alive than Rembrandt did. He's, I guess, more famous in death. So, yeah, people would stand Oh, I thought this was interesting. This is a little stuffed kingfisher that he used. These are the models that he used for these actual paintings of his. And this was a statue that the family preserved because he had used it for this painting. And so here's more examples um, of his work. Sometimes the paintings were not his, they were friends of his, so you had to really look. This is one of his. And also, um, they said that the colors that you see in his paintings now are not the colors that he painted with because of the chemical composition of the oils. Um, apparently, they didn't stay as true as other oils. He definitely had a, an interesting style. And these were skulls with paintbrushes in their mouths, and I'm not sure what they were doing there either, but they were interesting looking. He was very self-disciplined in learning to be an artist, and you can kind of see that he did progress, and he got better and better as he got older. He liked stuffed birds so he could draw them. <laughs> One of the things I love about Europe is their bathrooms are so clean. They're quite plexiglass and they're clean. <laughs> very, very nice. And this is where we had our dinner tonight. It's called Walk and Walk. So you, you can get it to go. Uh, we ate it there. But uh, this is how they make it, and boy, was it good. <laughs> I highly recommend wherever you see um, their logo, that will uh, walk, to, walk to Walk. That's what it's called, Walk to Walk. Very, very delicious, fresh food. So that's it for day three. I hope it wasn't too awfully boring. <laughs> Thanks for watching. But you can uh, take uh, chips, and he likes to make the chocolates, and it's it's not uh, like some chocolates you can keep them for a very long time. This one not, because he said I don't do anything else with it, so then it stays too long. <laughs>